concluding our session this afternoon with his thesis, It's Clear Cut, Don't Clear Cut Trees, Why Mass Harvesting of Trees is Immoral and Avoidable. Please welcome Gabriel Chavez. An eight-year-old boy near a quiet, hidden lake amongst the white-tipped mountaintops. The secluded lake with tiny bugs bouncing along the misty surface was one of the few places he could truly appreciate God's creation. Riding through vibrant green, luscious forestry in a black Chevy Tahoe, he gazed out the window at a hundred foot tall pine trees as far as the eye could see until there were no more pine trees, just bright blue X's on tree stumps. It now seemed like he was riding through an endless range of archery targets. And for this eight-year-old boy, the world was losing its beauty. He was losing one of the few places he could sit, take a deep breath, and truly connect with God. There are countless other reasons to worry about the loss of forestry beyond the loss of beauty. But to understand why, we must first analyze the various methods used to harvest trees that have stripped this beautiful place of peace. Forests purify the air we breathe. They filter the water we drink, prevent erosion, and act as a buffer against climate change. Forests also offer a home to many of the world's plant and animal species that provide us of essential natural resources. Deforestation involves the process of clearing trees by process of clear cutting, which completely wipes out every tree in an area in a uniform manner. Forests can also be removed by process of selective cutting, which removes a single or small group of trees specifically chosen by humans. In today's world, many use the blanket term of deforestation to describe the clearing of 15 million acres of forest area every year, without realizing how much more profitable clear cutting is, but how much more environmentally friendly selective cutting is. Although many believe that the clearing of forests to be converted to non-forest use is required for us as a human race to grow, clear cutting is immoral because it continues the escalation of climate change and because it directly contradicts God's creation mandate in Genesis. Christine Runyon, researcher at Johns Hopkins University, and Paulo Diodorico, professor at the University of Virginia, show in the research book, Global Deforestation, that overall, about 310 million acres of forest area has been lost. This is the equivalent surface area of Germany, France, and Spain all combined. With this extensive surface area of forest being lost, an extreme worry arises for the increase of climate change through carbon emissions simply due to the fact that one of trees' main purposes is to regulate air quality. As Beverly Law, previous professor of global change biology, and William Muma, professor of environmental policy state, all live and dead trees, including forest soil, hold the equivalent, equivalent of 80% of all carbon currently in the Earth's atmosphere. This makes forests the most essential air effective air filtration system on the planet and a major danger to lose. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the loss of forest as an air purifier has been a profound danger as forests pull about one third of all human caused carbon dioxide emissions from the atmosphere every year. Furthermore, with climate change and the long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns becoming a growing issue in today's society, increased carbon in our atmosphere will only increase the severity of it. Therefore, with the clearing of forests contributing to 20% of all global carbon emissions, it is of utter importance that we regulate the process of clear cutting to, to prevent the escalation of climate change and its negative effects like rapid weather changes and increased wildfires that we have all locally experienced. Some believe this environmental harm is not worth the regulation of clear cutting because it would minimize profit in the tree product industry. 
This is due to the fact that ClearCutting collects more resources and provides more products to sell at a faster rate than that of selective cutting. But Genesis 128 contradicts this by telling humans to have dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth. This is God commanding us to have dominion or take control over, every over the nature he has granted us, like stewards ensuring care and prosperity over his creation. Therefore, we violate this command of stewardship when we destroy his creation through processes like clear cutting for selfish purposes like money. This destruction does not fulfill our role as caretakers of the planet. It is anti-ethical to God's plan for the flourishing of all nature because being selfishly motivated by economic profit causes the flourishing of forest systems and species diversity to decrease through the destruction of habitats and food chains. Through this destruction of biodiversity, we will all be locally impacted through our pharmacies running out of medications. Through our pharmacies running out of medications or our local grocery stores hiking up the prices of food or even a spike in fuel prices. What most don't realize is that forests provide 25% of ingredients used in all Western drugs and pharmaceuticals, making trees and their products a lot more valuable than most would think. Therefore, the excessive harming of forests through clear cutting should be avoided, and the preservation of large areas of forest through selective cutting should be supported. Selective cutting fulfills our role as Christians by managing and supervising God's creation by leaving the world better than we found it. When thinking of an eight-year-old boy who is desperate for his home nestled in the snowy mountaintops of the Sierra Nevadas to regrow, it may seem like there is nothing for this young boy to do. But I'm here to show you that there is always something to be done. As I was that eight-year-old boy turning pale and stunned as my favorite place to be transformed from fascinating forestry to blue X's on tree stumps. Realizing that it is not necessary to lose these captivating forests, I was inspired to find and spread a proper solution to preserve forestry. Now, I hope I have spread this to you. Realistically, many of us won't spend next week nestled in the canopy of a forest to prevent its cutting. But the next time you come across a patch of tree stumps, ask yourself, am I taking part in the loss of, am I taking part in the loss of the most special ecosystem God has granted us? Or am I taking part in the preservation of one of God's most special creations? Thank you.